Yes, you might have seen in the news over the last day the 73-year-old Kim Parson, who is known as the Bicycle Bander here, robbed a bunch of banks here in South Australia between 2004 to 2014. He has had his sentence given to him, which is 28 years and on parole. Yeah, right. However, the controversy is is that he can access voluntar- uh, voluntary assisted dying because of his stage four cancer. So pretty much he can choose to unalive himself. Right. And that's what the controversy is that I guess a lot of victims you know, say that he should wait out his time in prison and wait until the end of his life in there as per punishment, as opposed to... euthanasia. Yeah, as opposed to dying. So a bit of controversy on that one. And in SA and Australia as well, new laws with vaping are emerging from October 1st. Anyone over 18 years can get a medical prescription to get... Oh, sorry. You don't need a medical prescription. You can get a vape from a pharmacy. Right. And and when's this from? From October 1st. Okay. So this is literally going there. It's going to be that same system that we've tried to implement where it's plain packaging. Yeah. Only three different flavors, mint, methanol, or tobacco, trying to deter people from doing it. But yes, no prescription needed. You would just go up, show your ID... And you get uh, told the warnings and all the problems associated with vaping, and then you can access it. But yeah, it's meant to be a bit safer than what's going around now. Well, I suppose for so long they've been trying to ban vapes altogether, but it, they just seem to keep making their ways into into streets, sure. and into shops. So I guess this is one way to try and water it down a little bit. I mean, I actually saw the Royal Australian College of GPs uh, president, Dr. Nicole Higgins, said that. Um, Australia's vaping reforms are actually world leading. Right, okay. Yeah, Yeah, well, I mean, hopefully the regulation uh, helps and benefits in a health sense because, yeah, it's uh, going from a level four to level three in the poison standards, so they're properly being tested, things like that. Okay, good news. Well, uh, hopefully that then can bring down all this vaping. Yeah, definitely. There's one way to spark controversy online. It's tackling a classic Australian debate. Mm. And I feel like Australians, the debates come from our food, our drinks, and in particular, our Milo. Yeah, big time. Milo is a staple Australian drink. Everyone has it. Huge. So it's up there, one of the big ones, and people love to talk about it. But an Australian influencer has uh, kind of got some flack and a little bit of controversy for kind of uh, unknowingly realising how attached people would be to this situation, telling everyone how she makes a Milo. Right. Is she claiming this is, like, the way to make yeah, Milo? Yeah, so she's saying this is the perfect way to do it. Right. This is how she's always done it. This is how you should all do it. All right, what's she doing, like, microwave Which, or something? I can tell you, Australians don't like to be told what to do with their Milo. <laughs> they don't like to be told what to do. Full, Full stop. stop. <laughs> yeah. Bring Milo and Vegemite into the scene, you're yeah, done for. Yeah, yeah, game over. But this, uh, this way to do it is pretty interesting. So... First off the bat, she uses about seven large tablespoons of Milo. Seven so tablespoons? Within this procedure, there's seven tablespoons. Not teaspoons, <laughs> tablespoons. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. I don't think I've ever gotten up to seven tablespoons. Maybe when I was a kid, oh. I used to I used to put in as much Milo or Nesquik as I could, but I don't think I ever was hitting seven. Oh, I definitely... that That's all it is, though, isn't it? This is such a kid recipe, right? Because <laughs> yeah. I've definitely hit the seven. Hell, I've probably cracked ten, but it's what you do when your mum's not looking <laughs> and she's outside of the kitchen and you're like five yeah. years old. Yeah, I don't you do, do this... a cheeky mouthful yeah, yeah. straight dry. I don't do this regularly as an adult. No. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like seven big tablespoons of Milo as well. You're taking up like half the cup with Milo because oh, it, it takes forever to mix in. have to have a pretty big cup, wouldn't you? But the whole procedure as well, it's pretty... If It just seems taxing as well. It's just something I wouldn't do if I want to quickly make a Milo. So what she does, she does four tablespoons in a mixture with a little bit of hot water for the body of the Milo, right? Right. And then adds milk to it, oat milk, not even regular milk, oh, so that's strange in itself. Well, yeah, you lost me. And then in another cup, right, so she has a separate cup, two cups going at the same time for this procedure, she then puts two tablespoons in that other cup, so she's got all the crunchy stuff, and then... God, how many dishes is she yeah, doing right? for and this then, one glass of Milo? And then adds the milk cup from before into that that <laughs> cup where it just had Milo. In the end, it's all just meant to mix it, make it crunchy on the bottom, yeah, right. smooth on the top, and then she adds more Milo to the top of that glass. So there's a lot going on here just for a simple Milo recipe. This is somebody who has too much time on their hands, Influences. Clearly. Influences. Influences. <laughs> yeah, they need making, to be stopped. Making Milos. <laughs> Look, let's get a discussion going around Milo. What's the perfect amount of Milo you put in? See, I do about two tablespoons usually. Two tablespoons? Yeah. Yeah, I'd probably be two and a half to three. Mm. I feel like that's the sweet spot. But yep. you know what? Maybe if you are a seven tablespooner, 
convince us why it's good. Convince us why, go- why it's good. Also, if you've broken the barrier of the seven, are you a madman that goes past <laughs> seven tablespoons? <laughs> We're going to cross over to Queensland this morning. We've got Alan on the mm. line. Alan, good morning, mate. How are you? Yeah, good morning. Yeah, good. very well. Now, Alan, have you got a perfect amount of Milo that you use? Or are you a seven tablespooner too? Yeah, two, uh, two tablespoons of uh, Milo, two tablespoons of sugar, and we're milk. Yeah, Jeez. okay, two Break tablespoons of Milo and a couple of ta- uh, tablespoons of sugar. Yeah, there see, the sugar's a crazy one. I've never added sugar to a Milo. No, I haven't either. I've never thought about it. It sounds all right. Could be a game changer. <laughs> it I can't see, a game going, changer. can't see it going bad. I mean, sugar's always going to taste good. It's always going to make something better, right? <laughs> yeah. Thanks for calling up, Alan. Let's go to Sally over in Eden Hills. Good morning, Sally. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, very Great. well. Now, Sally, how much Milo do you chuck in? Oh, every night we have at least one and a half tablespoons. However, sometimes my daughter adds a cheeky little bit more. Oh, okay. okay. So how much is a cheeky, cheeky bit more? Is she <laughs> yeah. cracking onto oh, the seven? May- maybe at least another teaspoon, you know. I don't know. Maybe at least two tablespoons. Oh, okay, so it's not a lethal amount. That's right. Oh, that's not lethal. And no sugar. Sugar's lethal. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Sally, what's the most amount of Milo you've put into your drink before? Do you have a record? Uh, probably three tablespoons, I'd say, at the mat. Do you suspect that your daughter might, behind your back, be doing, you know... Three to four. Three to four, five. boosting it up? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. She's 11. However, she would not put 11 tablespoons in. Yeah, <laughs> one, one for each year on the clock. <laughs> Good on you, Sally. I can't wait to have a 24-scoop uh, Milo today. <laughs> <laughs> got Stefan. Stefan, tell us, how much Milo are you chucking in? Hey, guys, how you going? Yeah, very, very well, mate. And yourself? That's like, yeah, very good, thank you. Yeah, now, so we've got a bit of a system going. We developed it back when we were about 12, 13 in, uh, in year 10 maths class. <laughs> oh, you so the actual system is, uh, is we, we start off with oak chocolate milk. Okay, all right. So you That's start off thing. with chocolate milk instead of regular milk. Correct. To make yeah, more cause, chocolate cause milk. Milo's great, <laughs> and it's got that crunchy, multi flavour, but sometimes it's not chocolate, you know? Yeah, it lacks So rather ch- than adding sugar, we add something that's already it's in its own right a good product. Agreed. So we start with oat chocolate milk. <laughs> yep. Then we get about five or six Tim Tams. Oh, oh Tim Tams. Right. Okay, go very yep. Australiana. Absolutely. Get those Tim Tams. We're all about Australia here. We're talking oat chocolate <laughs> milk. We're talking Tim Tams. <laughs> Ah, oh, it's made here in South Aussie. Yeah, you know, it's the good stuff. Quite patriotic in and the then maths we get class. Hundred percent, mate. You know, it was actually all. It all started because we were trying to boycott the uh, the increase in price at the canteen deli. So we tried doing it ourselves at the school, and that's why we brought in our own oat chocky milk, our own Milo, and our own Tim Tams. Yeah, right. And how much Milo are you now putting in this oat choc milk uh, Tim Tam drink that you've got going? Yeah, yeah. So we we, we decided on thirty seven grams. 37 <laughs> grams. Very specific. Uh, how many, yeah. how many very, tablespoons very, is that? Uh, I don't know. We have to get the scales out to measure it, so I couldn't <laughs> tell you for sure. So, are there scales in the maths class, or did you take it somewhere else? That was from the science class. Right, okay. <laughs> yeah, right. Jeez. And, and st- yeah, 30, 37 because it's a nice prime number. It's only divisible by 37 and 1. <laughs> the magic number. That's how you make a magic Milo. <laughs> Savan, how long would it take you to make one glass of this Milo? Well, we used to do it in batches because we do it for about six blokes. Um, but, yeah, you're probably making about five minutes. Stefan, you weren't selling off the Milo, were you? A little Milo rack Mate, no in comment. the science class. No, no comment. <laughs> Stefan, we have a double pass to spin off. We want to give it to you, mate. Oh, legend. Thanks, guys. Thank you, mate. Appreciate your call. Uh, definitely want to try that. Oak yeah. chalk milk. <laughs> Five or six Tim Tams and 37 grams of Milo. Who Not a gram less. <laughs> yeah, who would have known Stefan and his mates made history that day in science <laughs> class? <laughs> One of the craziest stories I've heard is coming out of India at the moment. And bear with me because it is a bit of a roller coaster. All right. All right. So a 60-year-old bloke had reported his wife had gone missing, right? And this prompted a missing persons case. Mm. Four days later, they find the body of a woman. The husband, his name was Ram, was then asked to go down and identify the uh, the body of this woman and confirmed that, unfortunately, yes, this was his late wife. Wow, okay. So the man got her cremated, spreaded the ashes, and then after examining the post-mortem report, 
they'd uncovered that this woman had actually been strangled. So right. this created now a whole new case opening up. The, the husband is now a suspect and they're tracking the wife's phone, hoping to find the killer and use the whereabouts of where it was last used. Now, they noticed the phone had been in use almost 600 kilometres away, about 11 hours away that day. Mm. So they're like, well, oh, still using the phone. We'll go down there. When they got there, guess who they found? The, uh, wife. the wife. The wife. What, a, the wife. Alive was, and well. What, the wife that was allegedly dead? Yeah, the wife that Jeez. the husband had confirmed is the body of his late wife. Not true. She when, was alive and well, just 600 k's away. Wow, when you said this was a roller coaster of the story, I didn't realise it would be at the peak all of a sudden. All, <laughs> yeah. all of the, the start of the story. That's, uh, that's crazy, isn't it? So she's alive, she's well. So who's this other person that has been identified as dead. Well, that's the thing. No one knows yet. So they're, they're still trying to work on that. But yeah, this wife, she had gone 600 k's away because she was cheating on the husband. So now she's been what? ordered She's been ordered to go back home with the husband. Death, cheating. <laughs> Story's insane. This is a uh, yeah. what, Indian soap opera, next level. <laughs> it really is. It's like the inspiration of the next Bollywood film. Sure. Uh, but surprisingly as well, this isn't even the craziest cremation story coming out of India this year because we've got to look back at February and this woman who was 52, she was in a house that caught on fire and sustained burns to half of her body. She was taken to hospital to receive treatment and when she was discharged, her health started declining and they found this woman dead in her bed. So the husband calls up a hearse, they deliver her and on the way to the crematorium, her eyes bung open and the guy is screaming, she's screaming, no one knows what's going on. Well, like a zombie. She was alive. Wow. She, was, she was just asleep. Jeez, what is so the hearse driver had to turn around and drive her back home. She was like, what the hell, guys? Guys, <laughs> need to sort out the uh, cremation over there. There's obviously <laughs> something wrong in the system, you know? Yeah. A, few, a few mistakes here and there. <laughs> Tom, there was a wild story thrown around the office the other day that we have to bring to the Fresh fan because it is so insane. Yeah, well, I did think it was insane the first time I've heard it, but the more people I've told, the more common I'm starting to scarily believe it might be. Well, you're starting to hear around the grapevine people do this. I've heard of multiple accounts now. <laughs> right, okay, well, let's, let's tell the story. So pretty much a girl from work at her previous job. So like, she's telling this story. This was a few years ago at her other yeah. job. This bloke she used to work with came in after the weekend one day. Everyone's doing the casuals, you know, how's, how's your, your weekend? weekend? Good, good. Uh, goes to this guy. He's a little bit gloomy. They yeah. say, why are you sad? He then responds Monday with... Monday blues. Yeah, it's Big exactly weekend. Right. Yeah. Not a big weekend, though. Not hung over anything. He turns around and says, one of the kids' guinea pigs died. Right. So a yeah. bit of a bombshell. Yeah, so the kid's guinea pig has passed away, unfortunately. So in the household, it's a little bit sad. And then everyone's consoling him. And then he says, nah, it's fine. You know, what's most annoying is that it's taking up so much room in the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when everyone in the office on the top floor <laughs> kind of said, what? And it's like, yeah, yeah, no, I've got the guinea pig in the freezer. I didn't know what to do with the body. You know, do you bury that or do you, what do you do? Yes. So, <laughs> <laughs> at least look at a wiki how, man. <laughs> look at something. <laughs> There's surely some instructions somewhere on what to do with a dead animal. Yeah, I mean, call up your local vet. Yeah, the council. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Landscaper. <laughs> Bring a shovel. The red bin. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what, what bin do I put a guinea pig in? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so he didn't know what to do with it, chucks it in the freezer, and then goes on to elaborate that not only does he have that guinea pig in the freezer, but there's a budgie in the freezer from a few months ago. A budgie as well in the yep, freezer. Yeah, and another guinea pig, probably its counterpart, its wife or something. I don't know. Gee, so, so is he... <laughs> He's got he's, half a farm in his freezer. Yeah, he's got two guinea pigs and one budgie because apparently he just kind of gets distracted and it's a mixture of that and also he just doesn't know what to do with these animals and then he forgets they're in the freezer and kind of just leaves them there. Like, like, would the smell not be something or is because they're frozen they're not smelling? I guess because they're frozen it would be all right, but are they bagged as well, do you reckon? They, they have are, to be yeah, bagged. Yeah, they have so. to be in a Tupperware, surely. I hope so, yeah. You wouldn't want it touching the raw chalk. <laughs> <laughs> Some next level contamination. Yeah, uh, look, we uh, we need to get a discussion going here. We need the we need the fresh fam to call us up and let us know. Do you freeze your pet, or do you know people that freeze your pets? Our producer Fem came in before and said that she knew someone who had a rat in the freezer. Right, and 
literally played out the scenario of going out and trying to get food, frozen pizza from the freezer <laughs> and seeing the rat staring directly at her. So it does happen. People do do it. It is a bit more common than we think. Yeah, we're going to go over to Osborne. we got Emily on the line. Emily, g'day. How are you going? Hey, guys. I'm good. How are you? Really good. Yeah, good. Now, do you freeze your pet? Do, do, did your parents freeze the pet? What happened? Uh, not me. My grandma. So it, it was a bird nest. It must have fallen out of the tree or something. Yeah. She ended up putting it in the freezer for about a month, showing her friends and all of us. So, wow. Yeah. <laughs> what, 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 for, for what reason? Just to show people? Yeah, I think she thinks it's interesting. Maybe she's getting bored of Bold and the Beautiful at home, so she's is, trying to uh, find a hobby. Is she getting into taxidermy <laughs> as well? Oh, God, I hope not. But, yeah, yeah. it was really weird. You wish your grandma would have a normal hobby like knitting sweaters, yeah, 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 not yeah, yeah, freezing yeah. Uh, dead birds. <laughs> <laughs> got Natasha in Mawson Lakes. Tell us, uh, who's freezing the pet? Hey, so my family friends had um, pet mice and yep. they had babies. And okay. the parents didn't want the babies, so they put them in the freezer. Right. And then my family friends who were the children um, found them in the freezer and tried defrosting them in the microwave. Oh, my oh. God. What, did they think it was food or <laughs> yeah. did they did they want to try and... They just thought <laughs> the, the mice were cold and they w- needed to be warmed up and they were going to come back to life. Oh, blanket was a, <laughs> really blanket wasn't out. the first option. <laughs> Let's heat these babies up. Yeah. Oh, man, that would have made an yeah. absolute mess of the microwave, I reckon. Thanks for getting involved, Natasha. You just would never cook in that microwave again. <laughs> no. You couldn't. No. I mean, I wouldn't put food in the same freezer where there's a dead animal <laughs> either, but here we are. Yeah. Emily in Parafield Gardens, do you freeze your pet? Hello. Emily. Emily? Morning, yes. Hi, guys. How are you? Yeah, good. good. And yourself? Good, thank you. Yes, so we do have an animal freezer just for these frozen animals. Oh, you've got so, a proper um, freezer straight up for animals? Yes, we do. Okay. Yep. What what kind of animals have you got in there? So my partner, unfortunately, his, um, his lacy monitor passed away. So he's put her in there and one of his roses, another lizard of his, passed away. So oh. we've got rabbits, we've got frozen rats in there, frozen baby rats, everything that, that you could possibly think of is in there. So, right. Emily, is this just a, a remembrance kind of thing, like almost having a bit of a museum of the the pets in there? Yeah, is what, there, are, you, what yeah. are you doing with them? So I eventually would want to look for a taxidermist for right. someone to, um, because she was so precious to us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair okay. enough. Well, it's a more practical reason than. Would you get all of these else? pets taxidermied as well, Emily? No, hell no. Just the lizard. Yeah, just yeah. the lizard. Okay. <laughs> hell no. <laughs> <laughs> no, the other ones. <laughs> They're not at the status no. of the lizard. The, the rabbits and the rats can just go in a bin. <laughs> <laughs> Callum, I'm no sneak ahead, but when I think of shoes that defined decades, you know, I'm thinking Converse's, Jordan's. Yep. I'd probably even chuck the Dunlop volleys in there. Those are uh, thongs with the bottle opener on the base. What? You take to a bar. Have you not seen them? <laughs> <laughs> it took the cra- It took Australia <laughs> by storm, maybe like <laughs> early 2010s. It was those thongs. thongs like, and they had like, a bottle opener yeah, on, the, you not seen them? on the bottom. Like Havianas and then at the bottom. It's <laughs> disgusting because you're walking on filth. Like you're walking on, you know, terrain, right? Yeah. And then they've got a bottle opener at the bottom. It's just a complete novelty thing. Can't believe you haven't seen them. I know what your next Christmas present is. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't worry about me, mate. <laughs> no, Nike are releasing a new shoe and I genuinely think that this will change shoes forever. I think every shoe is going to start doing this once they release and once they get the kinks right because They've teamed up with this other company, Hyper Ice, to unleash a futuristic gem combining technology, comfort and looks. Athletes that have tried them out say it's like having your own personal masseuse because, wait for this, these shoes will massage your feet. Wow. This Port- sh- yeah. Portable massaging shoes. Portable massaging shoes. They can also heat up your feet as well. Okay, this sounds like pure luxury, doesn't mm. it? I mean, it's also one of those that there seems like there's so much going on in this shoe. Surely there's going to be a few errors, a few malfunctions. What if it just starts <laughs> strangling your foot with burning temperatures because it's got the heater in there too? Well, yeah, that's the other thing. It has, it has like a compression thing in it as well. So it is designed for athletes. 
right? Because it's got the massaging to, to help you warm up and the heating is meant to, you know, get that deep uh, heat in the muscle and tissue of the foot and ankle, uh, ensuring that these athletes can not only move and perform more naturally but recover faster right. too. It's all done through these uh, high-tech sort of air pockets that are, are placed around and you just control it using four small buttons on the heel of your shoe. But... I mean, yes, like you said, it does sound like there could be a few things that could... It sounds like if it went wrong, it could go very, very wrong. Yeah. But it also sounds like... I feel like less athletes are going to be excited about this shoe and more like, you know, dads that want to sit on the couch. Exactly. As, yeah. soon as, as soon as this comes out, every dad who loves to watch a bit of Netflix <laughs> and have, yeah. uh, have a coffee in the morning will be an athlete all of a yeah. sudden. Get, get rid of the moccasins. Chuck them this away. This is the new thing. I love this. <laughs> Massaging shoes. I mean, how good would it be just like being around the house? You know, you never you usually take shoes off around the house. They're uncomfortable. They're yeah, clunky. Yeah. But having personal little masseuses on each sh- foot. Mm, it'd be like the new, uh, uh, sorry, like, yeah, Ugg boot kind of thing. But as well, <laughs> imagine going outside and people just looking at you. The perk is as well, as soon as you walk out those doors, everyone thinks, God, look at him. He's an athlete. Yeah, yeah. They, don't, they don't know that you're turning back around in the house and yeah. eating Cheetos you on the, the recliner. Beer gut, yeah. <laughs> 4X in hand. <laughs> Deodorant being sprayed. Fireworks? A leaf blower? Guess the sound that's coming from the boot of the car in Secret Booty with Tom and Callum on Fresh 92.7. Sponsored by Rent Buy It. When the bank says no to a car loan, give Rent Buy It a go. Yes, the easiest thousand bucks you'll make this week. It is absolutely huge and... We don't, we're not kidding, Tom, when we say it's easy. All you have to do is guess our secret sound, what's in the secret booty, and it's just yours. It's yours this week, right now, today. A thousand dollars. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. It would obviously it'd help me out a lot. It's a great amount of money, <laughs> for sure. What yeah. would you do with it? Uh, uh, I would probably... Uh, well, I, I would, it would probably just get me leveled, get my head above the water, yeah. to be honest. <laughs> Made me feel a bit more secure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, could I wouldn't just walk around with my head a bit higher. I wouldn't be put, I wouldn't be buying anything, uh, you know, normal. Stupid. It'd probably just go towards lunches yeah, for the next yeah. couple of weeks. I mean, that's a fair call. I guess there is a dip in between people. Do you do the mature, realistic thing, or do you spend it on a holiday? Either way, it is very, very useful. Absolutely, and you can use it for whatever you want because it's going to be your thousand dollars. All thanks to rent buy it when the bank says no to a car loan go give rent buyer to go because they've given us the cash and the car with the sound coming from the boot and i think we should hear that secret booty sound one more time let's do it all right we're having some (laughs) let's find out what's in the secret booty Can you guess the sound? Well, I'm glad it played out. Otherwise, we'd have to impersonate it ourselves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Take that actually as not you, bad. Take, maybe, take that as you will. Maybe tomorrow. But this morning, we've got to get to our guesser. And it's Tina in Ross Trevor. Good morning, Tina. How are you? Good morning. How are you guys? <laughs> very yeah, good. Very well. Tina, uh, $1,000. What would that mean to you? Oh. You know what? I'll give half to my children. Five hundred for one, and five hundred for the other one. Oh wow! Yeah, okay. All right, very generous. <laughs> Do you want to be my mum? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want to adopt us for this week? This week specifically, when you win, and then we can take a bit of the cash. <laughs> <laughs> Tina, um, have you been listening to a bunch of the other guesses last week and a bit of this week? I, I have. All right, and do you think you got a pretty good idea what it could be? Look, just. Going by the clues and the guesses and what it sounds like, I'm just thinking it sounds like a... Can I say my guess now? Yep. <laughs> yeah, Go yeah, it. say it. Peeling a sticker. Peeling a sticker. Ooh, okay. It does have that peeling sound. Peeling a sticker. Tina, I'm going to open up the boot now. We're going to see right, if that is up, the sound. Peeling a sticker, Tina, is... It's not incorrect. Right. It no, is Tina. incorrect. But Tina, you are bloody oh, close. From- Okay, this thank you. This isn't going to help you out too much, Tina, but I will say that is probably the closest guess we've had. That is 100% the closest guess we have had, peeling a sticker off. Jeez, we're getting close. It's Maybe a tomorrow, tomorrow morning must be the day. Yeah, it has to be.
One of the most embarrassing marriage proposals has probably happened in the last few days, and it's pretty crazy. It's out there. Yeah, okay. Uh, what's so, Lucas Bukovas, who is an MMA fighter uh, from Czech Republic, he has done he's done a proposal, right? Okay. But he could not have done it at the worst time. Well, so, he's done his MMA fight, gone in, lost. Right. Okay. So he's he, he, he like a real fight. Yeah. Yeah. This is proper MMA. This is uh, a championship fight. So okay. he's gone in, absolutely lost it. Yeah. Pretty down on his luck. Obviously, you know whether he wins or loses, he had the ring there to do the proposal. Still. Oh, at the game. At yeah. The, at, the, so, at the fight. So his, uh, you know, his girlfriend comes into the octagon. She yeah. steps in. Yeah. And they're trying both, to console him. That's yeah, all right. Yeah. And uh, it's it's already been announced that he's lost and everything. And on a last ditched effort, <laughs> he turns around and pops a ring to her. Right. Is, does he get down on the one knee? He or? gets down on the one yeah. knee. Yeah. yeah. Pops yeah. the ring. Keep in mind, this guy as well. Considering the nature of MMA, this guy is like not looking good. Yeah. <laughs> And considering the nature that he lost, well, he as lost. Well, I wouldn't. He, I wouldn't imagine he was looking good. Yeah, you can suspect he's a bit bruised up and everything. Yeah, you know, the pitches aren't going to be too flash, but he's gone for the proposal in front of twenty thousand people. Wow. Okay, she, that is uh, that. It's scary. I feel like the idea of proposing like in a in a busy restaurant is scary enough to do it in front of twenty thousand people, and no doubt, it, probably a televised event yeah, as well by the sounds yeah. of it. Yeah, you'd have to be so sure of yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not even a hundred percent, one hundred and ten percent when you're proposing <laughs> to that person. <laughs> yeah, now, you haven't done anything wrong in your past. <laughs> yeah, you've treated them yeah. right. You know, everything is top notch and great. In and fact, I would even just be like, listen, I'm going to propose to you after the match. <laughs> yeah. I'm would like, keep it a secret, but I'm not putting my balls on give, the line Give here. a little whisper. Hey, something big is going to happen. Just make yeah. sure you meet me at the restaurant or the Whatever you corner. do, say yes. <laughs> but uh, he's gone for the proposal. She yeah. grabs the mic off the referee bloke who okay. was doing the announcing for the winning losing. So everyone and, could hear, yeah. Yeah, and she turns around and she says, based on everything that's happened, I think probably not. Oh, and it is she the said most, no. It's the most brutal footage you'll see. He's still on the one knee. And it's just one of those, you hear about this happening, but in front of 20,000 people and losing a fight, mm. this guy's having the worst day of his life. That would probably be the worst day of your life. You yeah. quit the MMA, surely. Yeah. <laughs> Not even just out of the embarrassment, just you wouldn't want to You wouldn't want to revisit the octagon. Oh, God. Did the crowd, like, boo or anything? Or? No, nah, I think everyone's just pretty awkward. Just shocked. Yeah. yeah. Just Jeez. going about your way. Just leave the stadium, <laughs> head to the pub. She dropped the mic and walked yeah. out of the octagon. <laughs>